Good morning and welcome to Thursday, the day after. Yes, the U.S. Federal Reserve came out with their big meeting. We'll bring you up to speed and uh, more... <laughs> More banks needed liquidity. Don't worry. Everything's wonderful. 800 592 That is our toll-free number. Of course, the website at allamericangold.com. Make it part of your daily routine. Listen, we'll keep you in the know. Uh, make sure you head out to allamericangold.com and... and uh, so many things. Most of the stuff we talk about on the radio station, uh, we we don't cover on the website. So if you go out to that website, most of the stuff out there are things that I don't uh, talk about because you know it's only an hour. The show's only an hour. You don't have enough time uh, to cover all of the ground that we need to cover. A lot of things going on. I will tell you that even I am confused. I uh, listened intently to the central bank yesterday. Uh, Jay Powell, they did what we expected. They cut rates by one quarter of a point. So we now have a Fed's funds rate of 175 to 2%. Don't get it, you know, don't ask me. One seven five to two percent. Now remember, the last cut was the "quote unquote" mid cycle adjustment. Apparently, the mid cycle adjustment needed another adjustment. Now the Federal Reserve, you know, they have these meetings and they have a vote. Not all members are allowed to vote. I don't know why. You would think that you'd want to get everybody's input, right? But that 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 that, that that's too hard. So what they have is they have now ten votes. What seems kind of odd. You'd, you'd really like to have an odd number, wouldn't you? In case there was a tie. But uh, it was seven to three for a quarter point rate cut. That is very unusual. That would we what we people would consider a divided central bank. Most of the time, the vast majority of the time, if there is a dissenter, and usually there isn't, but if there is, it's usually along the lines of of hey, we're cutting rates and and a guy says, you know what, I wanted a bigger rate cut. Or if you're rise, raising rates, I wanted a, I wanted what? I wanted a bigger rate hike. In other words, hey, I'm with you, but I just think we should go further. One of those dissenters had that view. In other words, one guy on the that had the vote. So there's ten guys voting. One guy wanted a 50 basis point cut. Two of the individuals wanted no rate cut. So, again, division amongst the central bank. And that is rare where you have three dissenters is unusual. Matter of fact, in, in, in all of the years that I've been here, I think there's only been two meetings, maybe three meetings total. You think about it, they meet eight times a year. So I've been doing this six over 16 years. I know it happened once in 2016, and I think it happened once during the financial crisis, maybe twice. But again, usually the dissenters dissent the same way. Right? This was unusual, because you had one guy say, hey, we should have cut bigger, and then two guys say you shouldn't have cut at all, and the other seven guys said, let's cut, and I say guys, you know, uh, bankers, whatever you want, you know, whatever pronoun I'm supposed to use. Obviously, guys is not it. Uh, <laughs> seven said, let's go with the quarter point, so we got the quarter point. Nobody cared. 
Nobody cared. Because it was all about what they were going to say. Uh, Jay Powell, was he better than last time? So every meeting now they have a press conference. Remember, that's another change. That started this year. Because they knew. See, the Federal Reserve already knows. The banks already know. We need to be a lot more nimble. So you think about eight meetings a year. They used to have a press conference every other meeting. And they would only move interest rates when there was a press conference. Unless it was a big emergency. Right during the financial crisis, you actually had to move interest rates without press conferences. But that wasn't supposed to happen. See, that made the Fed look bad. So they came up with this great idea of, hey, you know what? Let's have a press conference after every one of these things. Because, again, the narrative is getting away from them. And it, they they feel that with these pre- they can control the narrative as, you know, as long as they have more of these press conferences. In other words, the Federal Reserve wants to spin, hey, we're doing a great job. When we obviously, all the data says they're not. Right? They're not. Uh, I'll get to that next. When we get back, though, I'll get into the heart of the matter. What did they say in the press conference? What's wrong with the banks? Where's all the liquidity? And what we can expect next. We're back, 800 So the central bank, as they get more desperate, and I use that word very carefully, because they, they are trying to appear that they are not. And what I mean by that is in the press conference, first of all, Jay Powell is not good. He, it, was it better than the last one, yes. He does not lie very well. He does not exude a lot of confidence. The reporters that were there, a lot of them are the talking heads that you see on the TV. We're actually trying to help him. I mean, the they were, and again, they they're asking questions trying to lead Jay Powell to the right answer, right? Hey, listen, Wall Street's going to like it when you say this. And and that was literally what happened yesterday. They needed to save Jay Powell from himself. I don't know that Jay Powell was any better. But the reporters actually were helping him. Hey, let's clarify. You, you kind of meant this, didn't you? Oh, yeah, 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 right, sure, uh-huh. So uh, here's the big things we wonder. One is, are they going to keep cutting rates? I'm going to tell you right now, they absolutely will. They will cut again this year. Now, the big takeaway from this, oh, no, they're not going to. Yes, they are. They have this thing called the dot plot. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like a a little third grader. And what, what it is is a graph. Okay, so picture a graph and on one side of the graph there's num- un- numbers from 0 to say 5. Okay, 0 to 5. And each member of the central bank puts a little dot on where they think interest rates are going to be and they show uh, previous and they and it really what's funny is they show previous uh, after they correct it they don't actually show what they really did which would be hilarious I would love that but then they they, they they show okay here's where we're at today and then and they do show some previous quarters but they like to look at okay uh, let's look at the next you know 2020 right Today and the next five quarters, and they put their little dots in there. And then they they say that this will tell us whether or not they need to cut, whether they're going to keep cutting rates or not. 
nobody talks about is it accurate? Does it work? Does it mean anything? And the answer to all I know, right, is no. As an example, two of them had their little dots at an interest rate that actually is higher than what it actually is right now. Okay, so wait a minute. You're on the central bank itself. You know that they're going to cut rates, and yet you put a dot that's above where the rate is actually at. How's it? That's not possible. Uh, semantics. It's my way of saying it should be more, I guess, right? But they said, the, so they used the word meeting. This was a big thing. Trust me, it was. It was one of the reasons for the, you know, gold sold off uh, yesterday. We'll get to that in a minute. But this was the reason why. Because the median, when they say, okay, take the highest guy in the dot, the lowest guy, did it meet in the middle, says that interest rates will stay the same for the rest of the year, according to this dot plot. doesn't mean that. Matter of fact, I'll guarantee you we will cut again. And everybody out there in in uh, reality knows it. The central bank doesn't want to admit it. Now he just, you know, the same old data dependent, blah, 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 blah. Here's the reality. They don't care about us. You need to accept that as a fact. How do I know this? Well, by lowering the rate, what does the central bank tell savers? What have they told the American consumer ever since the financial crisis? Think about it. Rates have never gotten above 2.5% in the last, what is it? 12 years? And we're on our way back down to zero. And and uh, every time they do that, here's what they say. Hey, you're, you're dumb for being a saver because we're going to punish you. Right? And, and don't you think that's, isn't that the exact opposite of what they tell us? I mean, every time you turn on the idiot box, they're talking about a 401k and how you need to save for retirement. They never stop. Heck, they even got a guy out there, syndicated uh, radio, talking about rice and beans. How dare you try to eat a steak? You got to eat rice and beans because you don't got any money. And yet the central bank tells all savers out there, you're an idiot. We're not rewarding that. Shame on you. You're a bad American. Get out there and spend that money. That's all they care. Matter of fact, talked about it at the press conference. You know, they downplayed business being bad. I don't know. Apparently, they didn't talk to the FedEx CEO. Wow. Horrible, horrible earnings out of FedEx. And that CEO pulled no punches. And just saying, it doesn't matter. Uh, trade, bad trade, good trade, trade doesn't matter. Everything stinks. Including right here. Matter of fact, I think Kramer called it one of the most disheartening conference calls he can remember since the financial crisis. They're not listening. But the big issue was what has happened in the repo market. So remember, for the last two days, I've told you that the Federal Reserve opened the Fed window. What does that mean? What that means is banks needed cash, they needed dollars, and they didn't have enough. And they have debt, right? they have bonds. 
hey, I don't have dollars right now. Here's the problem. Um, Apple, General Motors, Ford, Microsoft, right, all these, uh, Chipotle, McDonald's, Burger King, Target, Walmart. Hey, they need to make their quarterly tax payments. So uh, the money that we, you know, we, we send them these statements that say you got X amount of dollars in your account. Walmart's going to be uh, writing a check to the IRS at the end of the month. And uh, we don't have the money, you know. So we need to sell some of this debt for a minute, you know, just for a little while. And this goes on every day. Listen, this isn't new. But they're trying to create the reason why all of a sudden the Federal Reserve needs to open the window. See, no, all the banks are in the same place. They don't have any, they don't have enough cash on hand. And so the problem is what normally they could have sold these treasuries, these mortgages to another bank. That's how it's supposed to work. Hey, just hold this for a day, and then tomorrow I'll buy yours from you, and I'll hold it for a day. And it's, it's like a little game. It's a shell game. And believe me, the fact that it's this complicated ought to tell you uh, what really is happening. The fact that most people in the right mind don't even know what a repo market is. The vast majority of Americans don't even know what's happening today. Dumb down. Good little sheep. Yeah, you're a good sheep. Yeah, you're totally ignorant and naive. And let's just keep it that way. Don't mind. This is banker stuff. Don't worry your little head. So, on Tuesday, by the way, it's a bad thing when a bank needs to go to the federal win to the Fed window. We call it the Fed window. It's a bad thing when they need liquidity. Like, that makes sense. All, all of us know. You know when you're cash poor. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not broke. I'm just cash poor. Right? I got all my money tied up. I got a property over here, and, and I got a mortgage over here, and, and I, I, got all, I got this car over here, and, and I, got, uh, I, I got my money in the stock market. I just don't have any cash. Now imagine if that was your bank. But you wouldn't feel where you'd be like, what? You're cash poor. Yeah, yeah, I may want to find a different bank. So on Tuesday, the Fed handed out over $53 billion. Okay? And... That was kind of what they expected. They opened the window again on Wednesday. They put a threshold of $75 billion. By the way, I think it was $75 billion on Tuesday, okay? 53 point whatever billion. Wednesday, a little uh uh-oh happened. Banks needed more than $75 billion. Matter of fact, they submitted over $80 billion. So whether it was one bank, two banks, a bunch of, a bunch of banks, I don't know, but somebody didn't get $5 billion of liquidity yesterday. That wasn't supposed to happen. At the press conference... One of the reporters, again, helping Jay Powell and talking about, hey, banks were warning you guys about this. And I I actually covered, remember, I covered it here for you. It was an analyst at Bank of America uh, months ago, actually sent a letter to the Federal Reserve and said, hey, guys, we're going to have a problem. Right, they, we we keep having to buy all these treasuries. Uh, we we can't keep enough cash, 
And sooner or later, all the banks are going to be the same. We're going to we're, we got a problem. So they said to the central bank, obviously you weren't caught off guard. And of course, Jay Powell, oh no, 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 we weren't. No, no, we we do. And then they talked about the fact that the banks wanted more than what they were offering. And, and Jay Powell said, oh, well, you know, that was that caught us off guard, but it's fine. It, it it's going to be. Uh, that that's going to be a one-off. Okay, that was kind of his answer. No, we weren't caught off guard, but every nobody thought they would need that much. Which kind of goes back to well, that you were caught off guard. But this is how dumb these people are. Okay, because they knew they should have known. They just don't want to believe. See, here's the problem: they rather believe their fake academic datas and formulas that actually live in reality. I'm going to tell you what happened at today's Fed window. It didn't get better. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, presenting a daily conservative pro-family perspective since 1983 and continuing the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. President Trump is a master at controlling the political narrative. With just a single tweet, he can change the news cycle for days or weeks. That's how he made Democrats jump to his bidding by attacking a handful of extreme leftists for being, quote, a bunch of communists, end quote. Trump's tweets were a natural response to the inflammatory rhetoric of the squad, a group of four congresswomen known to be disrespectful of the president. In order of notoriety, the squad consists of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts. Just to give you an idea of how they like to spend their time, they held a joint press conference just to call President Trump, quote, blatantly racist, end quote. The famous rookie congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was just as quick to accuse her fellow Democrat, Nancy Pelosi, of racism. Trump himself felt compelled to defend Speaker Pelosi against this smear. Ocasio-Cortez is the kind of congresswoman we should all expect from a culture of safe spaces. She thinks anything she doesn't agree with has to be the result of racism. There's an important distinction to be made here. Disputes about immigration policy are not racism. It's not racist to try to make America great again or to urge someone to leave America if she does not like it here. Of course, everyone does like it here. Billions of people around the world desperately want to come here. President Trump is right to call out the opponents of border security and our free market system. There's nothing racist about it. Ayanna Presley may be the least famous member of the squad, but her recent comments about race were the most startling. Quote, We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice, end quote, she said. And quote, We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice, end quote. I hope you hear the subtext in what she's saying. Because what Congresswoman Presley seems to be saying is that all black people have to think exactly the same way about politics. If not, they simply aren't needed in our society. Now you tell me, who's the real racist here? This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Do you like what you see at the Trump White House? Will President Trump continue to advance conservative ideals? At phyllisschlafly.com, you gain complete access to Phyllis Schlafly Eagles news updates and commentaries and can track our work on Capitol Hill. Go online often to phyllisschlafly.com. And thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592. And... uh, (laughs) I'm just watching your news continuing to break here. Uh, now I'm seeing articles where uh, QE could be re- restarted as early as November. We'll get there. Let's get back to the repo auctions. I want you to understand where all of us are forced to put our money. You've got to have money in the bank. Can't pay your bills without it. Most people in America can't even get their paycheck without it by the way if I ever get time I'll do that story about all those people that uh, did you see that uh, payroll processing company went out of business something like almost 4 million Americans didn't get a paycheck the company sent them the money 
to put them into their employees' accounts. They just never did it, right? Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Got to have the money in the bank. And the, the central bank, this is only the second time that I know that this has happened. Obviously, during the crash, it happened. Nobody, you know, like banks didn't want to lend to each other. And so the central bank had to open up the Fed window. And now we're sitting here, like I said, this something bad's coming. And when you sit here and you start seeing these banks lining up at the Fed window, needing liquidity, and nobody wants it, that's a problem. You know that. That's easy to understand. But the market won't price in the risk until what? Until it's too late. Remember when the Dow hit its high last time? It was 2008. The housing crash hit in Phoenix, by the way, late 05. Right? Everywhere else, 06, 07. I mean, they're the last ones to figure it out. And all these warning signs are lining up. So this morning... For the third day in a row. And my guess is the window's just going to stay open until QE comes. The window's open again this morning. Another $75 billion. And again, what the central bank wants is they want to set the amount. They want it as low as possible. Right? Because they don't want people to freak out. Now, how $75 billion a day is is a small number, I, I don't know. You're talking about, uh, you know, it's only five days a week. So you're talking about 1.5 to, what, 1.7, depending on how many days in the month, trillion dollars a month. I mean, their whole quantitative easing balance sheet uh, it was 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 what? It's three point eight trillion. Pretty big, but they want it as small as possible. But they don't want it to be too small. That banks don't get what they need, which happened yesterday. Guess what? They didn't change it. They said seventy five billion again. See, because they don't understand how big the problem is. This morning, it got worse. So yesterday, it was $5 billion of liquidity. This morning, it's now $9 billion. It, it, oh, it, just, it doubled. So they offered $75 billion. Essentially, the banks needed $85 billion, which means, well, $84 billion, which means I don't know how many banks needed liquidity that didn't get it today they're gonna open the window again tomorrow i hope they raise the number they don't want to we'll see what happens just to break it down 56 billion dollars of treasuries that number keeps rising They've got so much treasury debt. That's what I keep trying to tell you. China's not buying. Japan's really not buying. Japan's kind of holding where they're at. China's a seller. It's a small seller, but it's a seller. Right? All this debt at these auctions is being eaten up by our financial institutions so they can pretend that things aren't as bad as they really are. Nobody wants any more. Wake up. So now the banks said, hey, you have these treasuries. The Fed didn't take them all. They only took $55 billion. So somebody, so I don't know, I don't even know, is it first come, first serve? I don't even know how it works. Right, again, another reason why we know this is corrupt. Because we don't, I, I, how, why wouldn't I know that? Because they don't want us to. Mortgages. This is a number 
that keeps worrying me. These mortgage-backed securities, the Fed hates these the most. They only, they took uh, $7 billion less than offered, and they offered up like 26 It's kind of small print, so I think it's $26 billion. They only took $19 billion of mortgages. I don't know what kind. Right? We don't know any of that. Treasuries is pretty simple. Now, I don't know. Were they long-dated treasuries, short-dated treasuries? What were I don't know. So at the press conference, Jay Powell downplayed what was happening here. And, of course, that makes sense. The, the thing about it was is the reporters were cheerleading him because they don't want you to worry. Because nothing about this is it's it's actually it's getting worse. So they've had the Fed window open for three days. Every day, more and more banks show up saying, "I need money. Take these." For the second day in a row, it's been oversubscribed, and today the oversubscription doubled, which means some banks didn't get the money. Now, of course, the, the window's going to be open again tomorrow. Right? We're just going to keep doing this dance. But the, the, the central bank wants you to believe, oh, it's just a temporary problem. Please. It's not like, you know, they talk, oh, well, you know, and I told you the story. All these companies got to pay their quarterly taxes. Like That happens every quarter. Every quarter. This isn't new. Now, if this was something brand new, hey, companies never paid quarterly taxes before, okay, maybe it's a temporary problem. Guess what? They got to pay quarterly taxes again next quarter. And oh, by the way, all these companies have different quarterly ends. Just so you know. I'm going to talk about what he said about QE. And what people are saying this morning, don't touch that dial. 800 951 For those of you that are thinking about it, should I buy gold and silver from this guy? You know, he's, I think most of you by now agree, pretty good at making calls as to what we should expect. As far as economic issues go. And I guess I'll give you an easy one. Whether you should or you shouldn't. If you believe in punishing success, in rewarding failure, don't buy gold. Don't buy silver. That's what you believe. If you believe that we should punish success and reward failure. Don't don't call. Don't buy. Now, if you think that's only a path that's going to lead us to destruction, you want to call. Because right now, let's say we already know Wall Street profits are no better than they were 10 years ago. But they've been rewarding failure. Right, and that, and so that's why we we've got this inflated price. Look at the bond market; it's such a great one. It's ridiculous. One seven five and going lower. What? Where's the fire? Where's the crisis? Right, one seven five. A Fed funds rate of one seven five, and any other millennial, any other decade outside of the last two in the 90s in the 80s the 70s the 60s the 50s the 40s the 30s would have been oh rome is burning and the american empire is collapsing now it's a reward for bad behavior see this is why we're collapsing it's because we've decided to reward the failures. How about all the savers out there? Hey, I did it right. I did what you said. I drank the Kool-Aid, man. I maxed out my 401k. 
plus every month I'm putting away uh, money into my savings account and I'm getting ready for retirement and I'm doing it right, you're punished for the last what? For the better part, well, for the last 12 years, but for a large part of the last, what, 20 years, they've given you nothing. Nothing for saving. Nothing for your success. They reward the failures. Look at all these banks, and we don't even know how many banks are 80, almost what, 85 billion just today? How many banks are at the, the window with their hand out? Hey, I didn't do a very good job of managing, and now I got a problem. Hey, give me money. Reward failure. Does that make it a better bank? Does that make the bank better? You know, the banks that got to be better are the ones that didn't get the money. Right? And I would, wouldn't you love to know who that was? Wouldn't you love to know, hey, did my bank not get the money yesterday and then didn't get the money again today? That may be a good indication of a bank you don't want to bank at. Guess what, though? You know what's so funny? Why, no leaks on that, is there? <laughs> we never get to know. We need a leaker. That's what we need. We need light is what we need. So anyway, gold sold off yesterday on the whole dot plot thing. and uh, not going to raise rates. And and as Jay Powell talked, I mean gold went. I mean gold was down to like fourteen eighty five. Started to come back a little bit. Started to come back, come back, come back. Because people started figuring out. Well, could, first of all, machines were trading. Then the humans started getting involved, and we're like, oh wait, that, that's bull. That's a bunch of BS. Then he said they'll keep the, 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 the window open. And then about quantitative easing. Here's all that he said. We'll do it if it's needed. We'll do it if it's needed. Here's the thing. And this is what I want you to know. They already know they need to do it. They just don't want you to know until you have to add until the last possible second that we're going to keep rewarding failure quantitative easing has to come back or this fed window is just going to explode because when you look at for three straight days in a row now yeah they turn in mortgage-backed securities but that's always in the 25 26 27 billion dollar range and really hasn't changed you know what goes up every day how many treasuries the banks want to get rid of? They can't take any more. And now this morning, it just popped out here. Uh, people are now, uh, there, there's a great chart out on the reverse demand uh, that, that's going on <laughs> in the treasury markets and, and talking about Jay Powell and now Goldman Sachs. They said that uh, they're now expecting the Fed to resume trend growth of its balance sheet in November. It is possible that the FOMC will take that opportunity to also reach a fi finan final decision on possibly shorting the maturity composition of its purchases which it discussed in its May meeting. Right, in other words, we're going to buy a bunch of short-term stuff, and a lot of it. And and that way, right, they, they, they think that they, they're going to get out of it. It doesn't matter. One year, two year, three month, nine month, ten years, fifty years. The Fed's getting ready to tell you the debt is unpayable. And that's why gold and silver are going to keep running. And rewarding failure only works for so long. Those of you that, you know, at the end of all of this, if you want to be a success, this bet, gold and silver need to be in your portfolio. It's just that simple. Final segment coming up. Hey, 
eight under nine five one zero five nine two. So gold, which was got as low as fourteen eighty four, fourteen eighty five, uh, started rallying back when when Jay Powell near the end of his meeting. I'll just read to you what he said. This was about uh, a little after one o'clock my time, uh, three three o'clock Eastern time. It is possible. Oh, by the way. The, the Fed window is going to stay open for market operations for the foreseeable future. Okay, And then he said it is possible that we will re- need to resume the organic growth of the balance sheet earlier than we thought. So at first I'm like, what? You were just selling it off. What do you mean earlier than you thought? Oh, so you knew. You knew the sell. That was just fake. Fake. Totally fake. See, they wanted to fool us into thinking they fixed something that they clearly hadn't. And he just admitted it. Oh, we knew. We do. Come on, you know. Just between us. <laughs> we were never really going to sell off the balance sheet that much. But, but at least now we can start adding to it and stay under... Uh, the old level for a little while. We will be looking at this carefully in the coming days and take it up at the next meeting in October. Hence Goldman Sachs. Hey, they're going to start quantitative easing again in November. We'll see how much it is. My guess is uh, it's going to be they're going to try to start small again, right? Start small, uh, $20 billion a month, something like that. That would be my guess. I don't know that that's enough. Here's what I do, though. That number will grow every year, maybe every six months, maybe every quarter. Get used to central banks talking about how big uh, they're going to be adding to the quote-unquote organic growth of their balance sheet. Doesn't that sound good? Right? What's a great word? To, oh, it's organic. Right? Organic, right? They want to they give you the illusion that's healthy. Right? Because isn't, isn't that what organic's supposed to mean? Oh, it's if it's organic, it's healthy. It's not healthy. What that means is the system can't support itself. There's too much debt and not enough money. And folks, that's the beginning of the end. So how do I know a new currency is coming? This is how. I'm not going to scream and yell about it today. Because I get mad. I do. I get, it makes me so angry. They're robbing us. They just reward bad behavior. Look, at they bailed out the banks, and now they're rewarding them again for being bad. We're going to suffer from We're already suffering from We've gone almost two decades, and you don't get paid anything to save. That's bull crap. That's robbing. And then they lie about inflation on top of it. By the pullback, this is gold, gold's resting here, right? Silver looks like it's found support here. Silver been hanging around uh, 1775 all day. Uh, 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. Try to have something good to sell tomorrow. Everyone take care. Have a great day.